has spent his career maintaining Navy planes until the day he got sucked into a jet engine. This little girl lost her arms in one horrifying flash. See how she overcame adversity to live the life she wanted. I can pretty much do just about anything with my feet that you can do with your hands. Artist Lance Ozanic draws his inspiration from deep within. The canvas creations that are making a real splash. Plus, how one man's taking body suspension to a painful new level. And the blue goo keeping this beautiful woman young and sexy for eternity. Unbelievable? Believe it. On Ripley's Believe It or Not. Welcome to Ripley's. This is where the artifacts and objects representing the stories are preserved. Here's the headline for our first story. A crewman on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier gets sucked into the engine of a jet. A little smaller than this one. What's unbelievable is that there could be a happy ending to this story, especially after you see this footage. Desert Storm, 1991. Thousands of soldiers risk their lives in the Gulf War, but none come as close to death in such a strange way as this man. Because, believe it or not, in this rare interview, he talks about the day he was sucked up inside a jet engine. I just couldn't believe that that actually happened. It's amazing that it didn't kill me. John David Bridges, then a 20-year-old aviation engineer, packed his bags when Desert Storm came calling. His job? To inspect jet aircraft on the flight deck of the USS Roosevelt. A tireless job, but he knew pilots' lives depended on it. We pretty well lived back at the catapults. We was up on average of 20 hours a day, and we was highly fatigued and stressed and just tired. We couldn't take showers. We ate out of box lunches every day. You're just dead to the world. You're so tired. Little did John know it, but a routine day on the job was about to change his life. It was while training a new recruit that disaster struck. I went in to check the nose gear launch bar and the whole back bar to make sure that everything was right and everybody was out of the way. And when I did, I walked in instead of kneeling and just like in an instant, I didn't even know what happened. It sucked me in so quick. It's just that fast. It's difficult to see on this Navy video, but that figure crouching in the right-hand corner of the screen, then walking toward the plane, is John. Now, watch. In a split second, he is literally inhaled by the thrust of the jet engine. When it starts sucking me in, I could feel it pull me. In a split second, I tried to pull away, and there was no way possible. It pulled me in like a bolt or dirt or some other material. The flames shooting out the back are John's clothes being spit out by the engine. He would surely have died if not for one thing. Amazingly, his body had been wedged tightly against the turbine's nose cone. As soon as I uh, got sucked into the intake, it sucked all the air my, out of my lungs, and I couldn't breathe, I would say, for maybe a minute. And the safety observer shut the jet down, and that's when I started breathing again and crawled out. But how badly had John been mangled? Would his uncanny accident leave him a broken man? Miraculously, the only injuries John sustained were a fractured collarbone and a punctured eardrum. Nobody really said a whole lot of anything to me afterwards. They just kind of looked at me and like it was astonished I was still there. They were surprised. They were surprised to still see me after an accident like that, walking and talking. John's crew members weren't the only ones surprised by his stroke of luck. John's wife, Tracy, was stunned when she saw the tape. 
I just couldn't even believe it was him. You know, I, I was really surprised. I couldn't believe that he would survive that. I mean, you can tell somebody about it, but to see it, it's totally different, especially when it's someone you're that close to. Today, John leads a quiet life. A father, he spends as much time as possible with his family. Well, I think after the incident, I realized that you never know when your time's going to be. You, you pretty well go day by day, one day at a time. And I just enjoyed the day and the time and what's at hand at that moment. Wow, he's a lucky man. Now, Mark Hayes works inside a four-story, 80,000-pound, fire-breathing, metal-eating robot. Some guys have all the luck. He's nearly two times as tall as a Tyrannosaurus Rex and weighs three times as much. He spits 20-foot flames and chews up full-size cars. Now, this fire-breathing mechanical monster could be biting off more than he can chew, attempting to crush three full-size cars in its massive jaws. Mark Hayes is the mind behind this mix of high-tech wizardry and reptilian splendor, and he's giving Ripley's an exclusive first-time look inside the beast he calls Robosaurus. With his 12-inch long stainless steel teeth and claws capable of exerting 24,000 pounds of metal-crushing force, the mighty Robosaurus inflicts damage of prehistoric proportions. Robosaurus came to life 10 years ago after Mark and his friends were inspired by the popular toy, Transformers. They decided to build a big one. The three of us kind of sat around and said, let's build a giant robot that's half robot, half dinosaur, and it's the world's largest Transformer. And then let's have it eat cars. The idea of Robosaurus became an obsession that took Mark and his partners almost two years to complete at a cost of over two million dollars. Making a giant toy like this, it's every kid's dream. It was a blast. Just the first time you saw a kid's face just light up when Robosaurus came to life, it was all worth it. And being the brain of this car-crushing robot is no easy job. Piloting Robosaurus is multitasking taken to its limit. To have to have your arms locked into devices, move your arms to move the robot's arms, all your fingers are on double-sided switches controlling devices, having your feet on pedals to drive it, add to that that you can't see that well, so you've got to use a video camera and a monitor quite often. For Mark, Robosaurus has become a family affair. While he's piloting the robot, his 21-year-old daughter Serena is the special effects coordinator. Okay. I love working the Robosaurus with my father. Yes, my dad owns a 42-foot-tall robot that eats cars and blows fire. What does your father do? As Mark and his daughter prepare to put Robosaurus's car-crushing ability to the test, they check and recheck to make sure everything is running smoothly. Because the crew is working with heavy equipment and fire hot enough to incinerate a car, there are always possibilities for things to go wrong. Probably the biggest danger has to do with fire. You have to be really cognizant of what direction the wind is. When these cars start burning, it gets to be a pretty big fire. Finally, it's showtime. Thousands have gathered to see the Robosaurus in action. As its first victim gets ready to bite the dust, the crew beneath must beware of falling, burning debris. Now that this fire-breathing beast is warmed up, car two quickly joins car one on its way to the junkyard. In a spectacular flame-filled finale, car three is reduced to a charred heap of scrap metal. Seeing the burning carcasses littering the ground, Mark knows another successful robo show is under his belt. It was wonderful. A little hot in there. Got up to about 110 degrees inside the cab. Wonderful show. Eight tree cars, mass destruction, lots of uh, flame and wreckage. I mean, it was a good day. After a busy day of destruction, Robosaurus transforms into a trailer. 
Once it's hitched to a Mack truck cab, Mark and his giant robot move on to their next destination, always in search of more carnage. Next, it looks like an average cab, but this taxi is about to take you for a ride into another dimension. Plus, this is no ordinary suspension. Find out why this guy risks getting ripped apart like a wishbone. And the art is stopping time in its tracks and capturing life's most precious moments with his one-of-a-kind creations. That and more when Ripley's returns.